Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be. I hope everybody is okay. This is Dr. Jeff Sarnik, Associate Dean of Criminal Justice Program and the Social Sciences here at Southern Hampshire University Global. I want to say hello here on August 11. Summer seems to be flying by. I hope everybody's faring well on the heat wave. I know I'm drinking Dunkin's as I do every day, habit forming. Yes, indeed. But here we are, problem solvers. And I say problem solvers because isn't that what social science criminal justice, et cetera, it's all about. We are learning how, and we continue to learn. Remember, it never ends even after you graduate. We learn how to become better critical thinkers, right? By absorbing a wide range of information and then applying it to our thought processes as we move forward to help people solve their problems. That's who we are. We don't build bridges. We don't fix pipes, right? We don't put Band-Aids on. Oh, well, maybe we might. But our job is to negotiate. Our job is to recognize those problems and offer remedy and solution. But you can't do that if you're just guessing. And if you can't do that, if you're just too distracted by the noise that may be surrounding the root of the problem. I, as a police officer, no problem was ever solved by shouting. No problem was ever solved by tumult or fighting. None. It was the art of skillful communication and negotiating. This week's book recommendation, this one's been around for a while, but it's great, called Getting to Yes, a Negotiating an Agreement Without Giving In. You can see the authors there. Great book. That's why I love books, because I, you know what? If I'm thinking, well, what can I say today that will inspire or motivate and add value and authenticity to the courses you're taking? And that's why I rely upon my library, and it's actually, this is the shortened version. I have more, more stacked up, and I really enjoy that because it gives me fresh ideas. It lets me know there's people out there, that's for certain, that are a lot smarter, smarter than I, a lot more experienced. And I'm always learning something. You never can stop learning. So part of this is what I'm pulling from this book is about separating people from the problem. We have a problem with that, don't we? You like to say, it's that person, it's them, it's they. But let me read you some snippets from this and hopefully you'll take this away and say, you know what? Yes. This will help reinforce my attitude and my dedication towards my discipline so I can get to yes with people. That I can be a skillful negotiator and help people solve their problems. They could be even mutual. Perception. Understanding the other side's thinking is not simply a useful activity will help you solve the problem. Their thinking is the problem, right? No. Whether you're making a deal or settling a dispute, differences are defined by the difference between your thinking and theirs. That's the first step to recognition. That's the first step towards remedy. When two people quarrel, they usually quarrel, quarrel over a, an object, right? Both may claim a watch over, or over an event. Each may contend that the other was at fault in causing an accident. Ultimately though, however, conflict lies not in objective reality, but in people's heads. Think about that. Truth is simply one more argument, perhaps a good one, perhaps not for dealing with the difference. The difference itself exists between, exists because it exists in their thinking. Fears, even if ill-founded, are real fears and need to be dealt with. Hopes, even if unrealistic, may cause a war. Facts, even if established, may do nothing to solve the problem. Isn't that distressing? Both parties may agree that one lost the watch and the other found it, but they still disagree over who should get it, right? Put yourself in their shoes. Empathy. Empathy is one of the greatest characteristics, one of the greatest tools any problem solver can have. How you see the world depends on where you sit. People tend to see what they want to see. We look at things through our own lens. Out of a mass of detailed information, they tend to pick out and focus on just those facts that confirm their prior perceptions, right? And to disregard or misinterpret those that call their perceptions into question. Are we seeing that now, do you think? And people dig in their heels when they think they're absolutely right without considering an alternative point of view. Provocation, small p provocation, is at the root of learning how to solve problems. You may not agree with something you're seeing in a course. You may see a depiction about a certain problem that you don't agree with. 
but that gets you to think about the problem and gets you to look at an alternative point of view. That is fulfilling. It's part of being a well-rounded human being who recognizes the human condition can offer remedy and or solution peacefully and equitably. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe to my channel. Again, my book recommendation this week is Getting to Yes. Great book. Keep on doing what you're doing. If you ever have any questions or need help or guidance or assistance, remember we have your back here at Southern New Hampshire University Global. Thanks and everyone, please be safe.